And our evidence-based practice topic is reducing odors and infected <laughs> wounds. My name is Katia. I'm Leanne. I'm Lydia. And I'm Leah. Enjoy our presentation. We originally focused on infection control. After reviewing the literature, there was an insufficient evidence to support our topic. We changed our topic to methods of reducing odor and infected wounds for our evidence-based practice. The review of the literature yielded ample evidence to support our topic. Odor reducing in wounds is important because negative psychosocial implications for patients, the patient's families, and even nurses. Our searchable question is, are silver-coated bandages more effective at reducing the odor of patients' infected wounds than other wound care interventions? Our PICO statement is, population, patients with infected wounds, intervention, the use of silver-coated bandages to reduce odor in infected wounds, comparison, other odor-reducing methods, outcome, decreased odor in an infected wound, time period until the wound is healed. Our conceptual definitions are, infected wound is a breakdown of the skin or an open sore that produces exudate and malodor. Odor is a smell that is unpleasant or a smell that is distressing to those who smell it. This term will be used interchangeably throughout the presentation with malodor. Wound care are, wound care are the actions a nurse, nurse carries out to reduce the symptoms of an infected wound. Odor reducing methods are methods a nurse uses to reduce the odor of an infected wound. The category of our question is a therapy question because we are looking at the effectiveness of silver coated bandages at reducing malodor with the outcome of being reduced malodor in wounds. We are comparing the effectiveness of one treatment compared to other treatments. To search for our research articles, we used CINAHL, um, and when in CINAHL, the subject headings that produced the most results were wound care with 15,251 articles, odor with 206 articles with the subheading of prevent and control, and the third heading was nursing with 477,505 articles. Using the three subject headings that we found to work the best, wound care, odor, and nursing, by combining wound care and odor, we found 104 articles. By combining wound care and odor and nursing, we found 38 articles. 30 of those articles were relevant to our evidence-based pro practice project. We came across a few challenges one of which being many of the articles we found were systematic reviews and a few relevant articles found in other types of journals um, were not exclusively nursing journals. In our PICO statement, we mentioned that our method of intervention was going to be the use of silver-coated bandages to reduce odor in wound infections and our comparison groups were other odor reducing methods. So the way that we were able to figure out which articles we were planning on using for our project was centered around silver coated bandages as well as topical ointments and homeopathic methods as well as wound dressings that were available as methods of treating wound odor. The level of evidence that we found for each of the articles varied slightly. For two articles, we managed to find level two evidence, um, them being randomized control clinical trials as well as a pilot study, which was randomized. Then we found an article that had level three evidence, which was a controlled trial without randomization, and an article that had level four evidence because it was a case study. The approach the first study had taken in evaluating the successfulness of the treatments um, involved taking pictures of the wounds before, during, and after treatment. The cleanliness of the wounds was evaluated by nurses looking at the photos taken over time. All of the nurses involved in the study were blinded to the treatment types for each of the wounds. Malodor was evaluated at a baseline and followed a four-step verbal rating scale 
and the exudation evaluation was observed in a very similar way as odor. And there was a comparison amongst the characteristics of the runes involved in each of the treatment groups. Wound odor was measured once a day by the investigator and the patient on a scale of 0 to 10, with 10 being the worst, for two weeks. As for the second study, it had two forms for the patient to fill out regarding what the wound looked like and when the dressings were changed. As for the third study, the nurse asked patients about the condition and odor of their wound, and they had a panel of people trained in smelling to evaluate the odor over 24 hours. In the first study that we looked at, there was a sample population of 75 patients who were all recruited from 10 different hospitals oncology units in Denmark. Each patient had to be fluent in Danish and over the age of 18 with a minimum survival prognosis of 3 months. Each individual had to have a malignant wound that was at least 1.5 square centimeters. By the end of this study, there had been 6 patients who were excluded for having received radiation therapy in the past three months to the wound area. The second study was a prospective single center open or uncontrolled trial. There were 16 patients in this trial um, with malodorous wounds. All patients received treatment with the topical formulation. In the third research article that we reviewed, all subjects were patients with malodorous malignant wounds from breast cancer who were at a stage of 3 or 4 and had sought treatment at the wound clinic. Um, only 4 of those subjects were actually recruited. In the fourth study, the pilot it was a pilot study and only 2 patients were recruited for this study with the cyclodextrin containing hydrocolloid dressings for their wounds. As for the first study, there were no significant findings between honey-coated bandages and silver-coated bandages regarding wound size, cleanliness, smell odor, or wound pain. There was a statistically significant decrease in wound odor with the metronidazole 0.75% gel after just one treatment and the gel was shown to be effective for the entire two weeks. There was also a noticeable decrease in the amount of exudate. In the third study we looked at, it was shown that malodor was controlled by the green tea bags when they were changed every 8 to 12 hours. For the two case studies that were looked at in this research, both of the participants described that they were satisfied with the results that they had found. As for the final research study that we looked at, testing revealed that the new adhesives did not have odor and that the bandages were effective. The charcoal materials that were used were found to be the most effective. The limitations versus strengths of the first article are limitations include the weakness of this study is the absence of a control group. The primary outcome was wound size, not healing. The secondary outcomes, malodor, exudation, cleanliness, etc., are more important issues for the patient than the primary outcome. The strengths of this article include its randomization and representation of a national cohort in which patients with MWs and advanced stage cancer are included. The exact same products for wound care were used over the 2.5 years of data collection. Trained nurses and BLN were supervised closely to make sure all procedures were carried out in the same manner. The limitations versus strengths of the second article are, limitations include a small sample size, there were only 16 people in the study, also, specifically involving odor from fungated tumors, which um, fungated tumors are malignant wounds that have come to the surface. This the uh, data collected um, just from fungated tumors is, cannot be expansive to all infected wounds. It's not generalizable then. The strengths of this article are 
It's consistent in administer administering medications as the researchers did not debride the wounds before applying the medication, but instead flushed every wound with normal saline. The limitations versus strengths of the third article are, the limitations include, the study design is a case study, which does not give strong evidential support compared to a randomized controlled trial or even a quasi-experimental design. The study was small to begin with, only four participants, and two participants dropped out of the study before it was completed. This um, is called mortality, and it is a threat to internal validity of the study. The strengths of the study are, this study provides some evidence of, to support the use of green tea bags as an effective, effective secondary dressing to control exudate and malodor in the treatment of malodorous cancer wounds and thus the potential to improve patients' quality of life. Also, the case study included in-depth interviews with the participants, which allowed for a, a deeper and richer data. The limitations versus strengths of the fourth article are, the limitations include a very small sample size, there is no explicit measurement tool to measure data, the product in the study was a newly developed product, also there was no, the study did not get go through an institutional review board. The strengths of the study include if the study possesses the key features of fluid handling along with odor or absorbency, and the results suggest that further research could be done. Our overall research strength was moderate, meaning further research regarding more effective methods of wound odor elimination or decrease is necessary to further understand what products work best to decrease wound odor. Some future implications for this study include finding ways to integrate the findings from this project into our nursing practice. As for financial implications, which of these products can be most cost effective and which methods do patients prefer? Regarding research questions, which methods are most cost effective and is there any method that exists or is in the making that could potentially eliminate wound odor? As a side note, while completing our research, many of the journals we encountered were not nursing journals, which leaves us asking, is this question exclusively a nursing concern, or are there other members of the healthcare team that can be involved? So once again, we're group 10. Thank you for watching our video on presenting the research we've done on odor-reducing wound care. If you have any questions for us, please leave us a comment below. My name is Claudia. I'm Lydia. I'm Leanne. And I'm Leah. Thanks for watching.